Okay, just going over laying out a common rafter today. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the frame square. So the, the roof that we're doing is the same one we're doing in shop. Uh, so the building is 10 by 12. Um, it's a 712 slope. Here's the sketch of our uh, shop project. Uh, you can see that the building width is 10 feet. The length is 12 feet. Uh, it's a gable roof. Um, the triangle off to the left states the slope of the roof, so it's a, it says a 712. So that's the numbers that we're going to place on the framing square to be able to lay out our rafter. All our calculations are based off of, of this building. So our building has a 10 foot span. So if we divide that by two, we have a, a five foot run. So all our calculations are based off of a five foot run and the 712 slope. So first thing we're going to do is going to set the framing square. So on the tongue of the square, we're going to set the unit rise, so seven. So I take the button, I go to the seven, I go just beyond the seven. That's where I put the button. So it's a seven twelve, right? So there's the seven. Now along the blade, I'm going to go 12 inches. So again, 12 inches, move the button to the other side of the 12. And then what you always want to do is you want to check to see when you put that up against a piece of wood, do you actually have seven and 12 making contact at the wood? So I put up against a piece of wood. And I have a look to see, does 7 actually hit the wood here? Does 12 actually hit here? And it does. So there's the square that we see on the elevation plans showing us the actual triangle for the roof. Okay, so that, that's the, our first step. That's set up correctly for the common rafter. Next thing we want to do is grab a piece of wood that's going to be long enough to lay out our rafter. So the span of our building is 10 feet. So to get the run of our building, we're going to take the span and divide it by 2. So 10 feet divided by 2 gives us 5 feet. Um, the slope that we're going to be using is a 712 slope. So what that basically means is that we have a 12 horizontally and then 7 going up vertically. This is usually called the unit rise. This here is usually called the unit run. The hypotenuse of the triangle, right, so we're dealing with a right angle triangle there, the hypotenuse we usually call the unit common rafter. For short form, we call that the UCR, okay? The way we're going to find that is by using Pythagorean theorem to solve for, for the hypotenuse. So we're going to go with the square root of 7 to the exponent of 2 plus 12 to the exponent of 2. Uh, and then we'll put that into our calculator. So I'll pull out the calculator here. We're going to grab the square root button. Put the brackets on 7x squared plus 12x squared, close the brackets, press equals, we get 13.89. So we're going to round that to two decimal places. That's typically what we see on the framing square. So we're going to follow suit with that. Uh, so that's inches, right? So if the 2 was 5 or higher, I'd make that 9 become a 0 and then bump up the 8 to a 9. But it's not, so we'll round to two decimal places. That's the number we're dealing with. So the reason why we needed that is because we we're going to get the what they call the line length of the common rafter. So the line length of the common rafter, the formula is run times UCR. So the run, um, we can see here is five feet. So that, that five feet is could also be called five runs or five triangles is kind of the way that I like to look at it. So five triangles here times the UCR of 13.89 will then give us our length in inches. So pull out the calculator again. 5 times 13.889 gives us 69.45 inches. So that's 69 whole inches. We're going to subtract the 69 out of the calculator. We're left with decimal fractions of an inch. We want to find out what that is over 16, so we'll multiply by 16. That'll then give us our numerator, which is going to be 7 sixteenths. So 69 and 7 sixteenths will be the length of that rafter from the uh, center of the building to the outside wall. Okay. The length of the rafter is 69 and 7 sixteenths to the bird's mouth. So an 8 footer should be plenty for me, for me to be able to lay out the rafter. So the first thing I want to do is check the crown of the piece of wood. So I got a 2x4 here. Uh, we're going to use 2x4 for the common. I'm sighting down this edge here, looking down this edge, checking to see where the crown is. So I'm looking for the deviation in the wood this direction. So I always want the crown up, which is going to give me more strength. So if it's a really bad crown, put it aside. Use it for a shorter rafter. 
Uh, in this case, it kind of goes up and then back down around. So, but primarily that would be crown up, meaning it's curling up in this direction. Okay, so under tension, uh, it's going to be resisting to try and to, to try and go down. So that's what we want. We want that to be up, which then means this is the top of the rafter. So I'm going to go ahead and label that as being the top of the rafter. Okay, so when I lay out a rafter, I always do the same sequence. I always have the top of the rafter face me. So when I put it down on the tabletop, the top faces me. The arrow faces me. So this is top of the rafter. Then I know for sure that my bird's mouth is going to be on the bottom. Okay. Uh, next thing you do uh, is you start from the top corner of the roof. This would be my ridge. Right, so if I have a rafter actually sloping, that would be the ridge. It's sloping down. This is where, where the bird's mouth is going to be. Then your overhang. So I always want to start at the peak, the ridge, with my first plumb line. Okay. So I'm going to put that back down. Plumb line is, right, so seven is, is unit rise. Rise is plumb. So that's going to be a plumb line, right? So all my lines that are going to be plumb are marked on the seven side of the square. So I go to the very top corner of the rafter, and I draw my first line. There's my first line. That represents the center of the ridge. Measure 69 and 7 16 So 69 7 16 I mark it along the top edge of the rafter. And then from what I, gotta, what I have to do is I have to create another plumb line there. Okay? And that's where my mark is right here. And I draw another plumb line there. So what that does is that gives us the location of the outside of the wall, which is where we're going to have the bird's mouth. So somewhere I'm going to need a horizontal line here. I'm going to cut that horizontal line out, which is going to create a little bit of a notch there that's going to sit up on top of the wall. So the next thing we need to do is get uh, a distance here, which is called the stand. Uh, and that's usually dictated by uh, the seat cut here or the, or the bird's mouth horizontal portion, which needs to be minimum by code one and a half. So just to be safe, I'm going to go more than that. I'm going to go one and three quarters. So one of the best ways to do that is just to take a frame square, come 90 degrees off that line, measure over one and three quarters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then 90 that down. Go 90 down using the square on the seven side. Wherever that hits the edge, I'm going to go 90 degrees that direction. So I went over one and three quarters, brought that one and three quarters to the edge of the board. Wherever that line hits the edge of the board, I go that direction. So that's the beauty of the frame square. I could do that for us, right? So if I have a plumb line here and I want to go 90 degrees to it, I just simply slide the square over. Then I mark the 12 side of the square. That automatically gives me that bird's mouth, which is going to be removed eventually to be able to, to lay out the, uh, the cut for uh, sitting on top of the wall plate. Now, another thing you should do at this point, if you have sheathing on your wall, so maybe I'll just do a quick little sketch here if you zoom in here. So if I have, if that's my wall plates, so there's your double top plate, there's your top plate, so I'm drawing it upside down, there's your studs, and there would be your bottom plate. Um, so basically, what we're trying to, um, it, what we've done so far is we laid out a rafter to this point right here. There's the rafter coming through. There's the bird's mouth comes around, and then from there we continue up. But most of the time we have sheathing on that wall, right? So we have OSB sheathing, 7 16 A lot of times that sheathing would come about halfway up that double top plate. So we've got to make sure we allow for that sheathing there in our layout so that uh, the rafter fits properly on the building. So right now I laid out to here, but I want to shift to here. So if that's roughly half an inch, I'm going to go probably 9 16 uh, to make sure that I have enough material removed so that it fits in place properly. So I come back over here. Again, that's the framing. We want to allow for the sheathing. So I'm going to go 9 16 extra. I'm going to allow for that sheathing so that it fits properly on the building. We still want this line though, because that line tells us where we nail it on the structure. This line here is allowing for the sheathing. So when you go to install the rafter, you don't want to make sure that this is tight to the sheathing. You want to make sure this pencil line here follows the frame, the wall basically, right? That line follows the wall. So that's what's more important, okay? So we allow for that little extra. I think down in the shop, the way we do the projects, we don't actually have to allow for that half inch sheathing, uh, but normally you do, okay? Now the last thing we're gonna do is 
allow for the projection. So just back over here for a second. Um, the plan in the shop and what we're doing right now is a 12 inch on center projection. Okay, so 12 inches uh, from the, should be from the framing. So from the framing to the outside of the fascia is 12 inches. So we only want to know our, our distance to this location here, which is the plum cut at the fascia. That's the, the rough fascia, which then receives your aluminum fascia. But that's going to be installed on the end of the rafter. So we got to remove that to begin with. So what we're really looking at is the distance from here to here. So 12 minus 1.5 is 10.5. Okay. So what you're looking at there is this wall is the same as this line right here. Right, so from that line, we got to go 10 and a half inches over. That's plumb. That's horizontal, which then is also 90 degrees. Well, the frame square does that for us, right? So if I take that frame square, put it up against the wall. So again, like that drawing there, imagine your double top plates here. Then you have your top plate. Then you have your stud. So that's a, a plumb wall. We have to go 90 degrees to the plumb wall, 10 and a half inches. Okay. So frame square does a lot for us, right? Working off a of plumb, if we go 90, we got horizontal. So if we simply go from here, that's zero, go over 10 and a half inches, put a little crosshairs there. That tells me exactly where uh, that cut has to be on the tail of the rafter. So I did, then just slide my square over and mark again a plumb cut, another plumb cut. And that there would be the cut for the fascia. So I like to label my cuts, a little arrow there, telling myself to cut it, so I removed for the fascia. The common error that a lot of people do when they lay out a rafter is they measure 10 and a half inches this way. So that, remembering, the rafter is running on an angle. So that's a diagonal measurement going this direction. The projection is horizontal, so it has to be 10 and a half this way. Common error is people will hook on here and measure down 10 and a half. You can see it's nowhere near that. It's the hypotenuse of a horizontal 10 and a half, right? So it, it's gonna make sure that's the common error. Make sure you use your square 90 degrees off of the wall, 10 and a half, make a little crosshairs, slide your square over, lay out that plumb line. Here's the uh, 3D view of our shop project. Just wanna go over why we have to reduce for half the thickness of the ridge. Uh, so we're just gonna zoom in here into the, the, the ridge here. I'm gonna do a top view. I'll put it on uh, parallel projection. So basically, if we kind of zoom out, that's our outline of our building right here, kind of in gray. And then we have our projections around the perimeter. So these are common rafters on either side. And that center piece is the ridge. So I've just kind of gone ahead and drew in a center line there because all of our calculations are based off of theoretical. So before there's actual thickness to materials. So all the calculations come from the center point of the buildings. When we calculate the, the line length of the common rafter, it's from the center of the ridge to the outside of the wall plate. That determines where the bird's mouth is going to be located. Um, so whenever we go to do the layout, we have to reduce for half the thickness of the ridge because we have to make a cut here on that rafter. Right? So the, the calculation goes from the center of the ridge to the outside of the wall, which then gives us our bird's mouth. We then have to reduce for half the thickness of the ridge. Um, because we want to cut it right here on this line here, the plumb cut line. So, go back to top view here. If our um, if our ridge is inch and a half thick, so if I measure from here to here, we can see that that's one and a half. So basically the math goes to the center. So I have to take off half of that, which is three quarters of an inch. One thing when you look at a plan view, the plan view is all horizontal measurements. So when we actually go to, to lay that out on the rafter, we have to make sure that we're measuring horizontally. So it's three quarters of an inch horizontally. So we have to measure off of a plumb cut three quarters of an inch to be able to actually reduce that rafter by the proper amount. So it's not three quarters on an angle, it's three quarters horizontally. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do is the top of the rafter. So there's our center of ridge. So from there, I gotta come back half the thickness of the ridge. So again, the ridge when we're looking at this drawing here, that's a plan view. That means every dimension on here is measured horizontally, not diagonally, horizontally. So we come over here. Again, we can't measure down this distance 
half the thickness of the ridge. It has to be horizontally. If this is plumb, 90 degrees to plumb is horizontal. Common error again. All right, so I gotta go with my frame square on that line. Probably a good idea when you're first starting off to make a 90 there. And along that 90 degree line, measure half the thickness of the ridge. So if it's an inch and a half ridge, we go three quarters. If it's a, uh, a one and seven eighths ridge, we go 15 sixteenths. So one and seven eighths would be LVL. That's a common material used for, for, um, for ridges. Um, but in this case, it, it's gonna be one and a half thick this ridge, half of that is three quarters. So along that 90 degree line, we'll measure over three quarters. And at that point, we bring back the frame square and we draw a plumb line at that location. So the key there is 90 degrees from a plumb line, you measure half the thickness of the ridge, which in this case is three quarters. That becomes my cut line right there. Now this distance here, again, the common error is people measure three quarters here. If you actually measure that, we're almost at uh, 15 sixteenths. So if you measure three quarters here, that's diagonal. It needs to be three quarters horizontal because it comes off of a plan view. So if I actually measure the stand right now, so it's actually two and seven eighths. So the distance from here to here is two and seven eighths. So when you go to lay out in a shop, that's how you're gonna have to lay out, okay? So we'll mark a line from the plumb, hook on 69, seven sixteenths. Now I'm gonna use the stand, right? We know the stand is two and seven eighths. Make sure your buttons are on, draw that line. That's not a whole number, right? It's at seven, so I'm gonna go backwards. There's one inch, there's two, and there's seven eighths right there. Okay, so I measured back two and seven eighths, which is the stand. Then I'll just slide my square over. So that's where I had it, slide it over. Automatically gives me my horizontal. Come back over here. That's my wall. Gonna go over 10 and a half. Make a crosshair, slide that down. There's the cut. I'll just add for the sheathing. So 9 sixteenths. I'm going to put some checker lines there so I know that has to be removed. Maybe label that so it has to be cut. Go to the top. Remove half the thickness of the fascia. So 90 degrees to a plumb line. Draw a little line. Measure over half the thickness of the ridge. So three quarters. And then draw another line there. Label that as my cut. And that's good to go.